Hello, everyone. Open Source Program Manager Brian here with some great news. The Good Docs Project is the latest open source project to join the GitLab Open Source Partners Program. Uh, I'm delighted today to sit down with several members of the Good Docs Project to learn more about their mission and their projects and to learn, uh, so we can learn rather, about uh, ways that the entire GitLab open source community can engage with them and learn from them. But first, uh, I want to get acquainted with our guests, so I'll allow them uh, some time for, for quick introductions. And we'll start with Michael. Michael, thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Michael. I'm a working group co-lead, and I'm a, a contributor to a couple of our different working groups. Uh, I'll pass it on to Brian. Hi, Brian Klein. Um, been with the Good Docs for a few years, involved in the tech team, helping with website, technical stuff, infrastructure, and part of the GitLab migration group. So was most familiar with that part. Uh, Elisa? OK, I am Elisa. I am one of the community managers for the Good Docs project. So help with uh, just onboarding with the community and making sure that we have a positive community culture. And I will pass it to Valeria. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Valeria Hernandez, and I am the leader of the Chronolog team. And I will pass it to Cameron. Hi, folks. Um, my name is Cameron Shorter. I've been here since the start of the project and uh, have sort of touched a, a number of the working groups in the process as I've gone through. And I'll pass to Meng. Hey, folks, I'm Meng Men Tong. I'm a technical writer, and I've been working on this project for one and a half years. And uh, I've been working on templates and documentation style guides. Uh, so I'll pass it to, well, I guess I'm the last one. Great. Thank you. Thank uh, you all. Uh, me and still two more. <laughs> oh, we missed. Oh, we missed. Oh, my notes were covering the screen. My apologies. Let's continue. All right. uh, Aaron, go for it. Hi. Hey everybody, uh, Aaron Peters. I am one of the co-chairs for the project. Um, I'm also serving in kind of a release program manager role uh, and working on some of the, the project's uh, internal operational tooling. And uh, yeah, Ryan. I'm Ryan Macklin. I'm also one of the co-chairs. I'm involved with our content strategy team and I'm one of the licensing nerds uh, in the group. Awesome. Always good to have licensing nerds on the call. Thanks uh, so much, everyone, for being here, uh, especially since we are officially straddling four different time zones uh, and we're doing it with panache. So thank you all for uh, being here and, and, and allowing us to have this conversation. Uh, let's get started You know, right at the beginning. Tell me a little bit about the Good Docs Project. What's your mission? What's your vision? What are you committed to? Oh, was that me taking that question? Um, so um, right from the start, when we started this project, what we aimed to do, like we went out and we said, let's go in and, and write documentation. And you looked around, where was the best practices? And they were in blog posts. They were in you know, document, a document over here. There were presentations that people were talking about. And we didn't really have like a key place where all of this was. And so we sort of said, hey, let's, Let's do that. Let's let's be that force. Let's be the dream team that pulls all of this together. And I'll, I'm going to spin off that and say, and why open source? And I think one of the things that us as tech writers, we're typically the singleton in a much larger team or a much larger organization, and we're we're always the the um, the, the little bit of like it would be a nice to have to get your documentation better, but there's always a, like a quick fix that you could put in place. And what we are able to do by being collectively all helping is all of us people who are all feeling the pain of wanting to do and write good documentation, if we actually all collectively pull all this together, um, that is the, 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 the key place where open source really, really thrives is, is everyone going in and being passionate and, and bringing it together to solve a much bigger problem that no one individually can solve by themselves. 
Yep. Totally get that spirit and appreciate it that, um, so, so the idea is then to, to act as sort of a, a, a clearing house and a, a set, you know, a center of expertise for better open source documentation. That makes yeah, sense. Which incidentally is better documentation for all software projects. Right. Um, but let's right. focus on open source. That totally get that. Yeah, that makes sense. So what motivated you what motivated you all to you know start a project like that? I mean, Cameron hinted at it a little bit, talking about um, you know, not really having a, a central authority for anything like this, not you know, kind of feeling isolated and all kind of um, you know, existing in your own little pockets of the internet or or at your own organizations. Um, why why start something like this? Uh, I, I could take this one. Uh, I'm sure others have a, have their own point of view too. But um, my angle when it comes to working as a tech writer, as a as a UX content strategist, is that uh, the tech that we make frequently unintentionally hurts people. Like there's a lot of psychological passive harm that just happens in the world from people being confused or stressed out about some piece of technology they need to use, but it's unclear what they need to do, or it's even incorrect about what they need to do. There's some nuance missing. And it's a, like, I see it as like a social, like communal, like even maybe even like global good to empower people who are trying to communicate at all this, these things, whether it's a single tech writer who's overwhelmed or maybe just a bunch of developers who don't have a tech writer, but they want to be able to get it out there and have some way of saying, uh, where do I even start with, with documentation? Being able to produce something that doesn't, that reduces some of that continual technological harm that goes on every minute, every day. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, and then, you know, to follow up on that, I can't, again, Cameron hinted at this a little bit, you know, with the with the the, the uh, commenting on the spirit of of the open source project. You know, why undertake this as a as a, a specifically community oriented open source project? You know, um, doing things that you can't do by yourself. Uh, I totally understand that, but there, you know, that's also a reason that people form for profit companies, right? So, why do this as an open source endeavor? Uh, if no one else wants to take this, uh, this might be mine, mine too. Yeah, it. Um, th there is big tech companies who are going in and writing style guides. Um, you know, Microsoft, Google, they're they're doing it, but quite often they have an internal focus and they do it internally. And the business case internally to push out and do it collectively across the whole industry um, is is not there. There's always you know something more important that gets the attention. Um, it just hasn't happened. And there are, like, I, I'm a software engineer and I came out of being used to having agile processes and scrum processes, and they are good. You know, they're, they're, like, they're, they're excellent. And there are standards bodies behind it. And, and project management, if you go and look at the project management stack, there are awesome standards that we can follow that have got, like, decades of research behind them. Um, and although there are some standards bodies that DITA in particular have uh, for, for documentation, it hasn't really been targeted and focused at the um, uh, uh, like the developer experience and, and really handholding through the really early stages of this. And, and that's what we were stepping in to try and do. And we knew we could do it as open source or rather we thought we could, um, but we didn't. Um, in order to be able to, to push it through one of those other things would have been, wasn't within our reach uh, with, with each of us within these organizations. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. Uh, and you've been using GitLab for a good amount of time to do this work. Um, how long have you been using GitLab? And, um, you know, what, what features uh, of GitLab do you find most useful for, uh, you know, succeeding at your work? Brian, do you want to take that one? Um, I I was gonna have I don't know if you if you collected that data or not if you have the numbers I it's been do you, do you know for sure that when we started when we actually did the migration? Well, we um, yeah we started the migration almost exactly a year from the time of this yeah. recording. Uh, we wow. did the migration in June of 2022. 
that's it. Yeah. So a year now, and um, I think we have about fifty-seven members uh, within the organization. Right. As like, you know, uh, accounts we have added in as membership roles to something. Um, and that's been growing, so that's nice. We're getting new people onboarded all the time. And then in terms of helpful features, I think there's some others that might. I, I think what's interesting is it's a big enough project and we have enough mm -hmm. different slices of the thing that we, you know, there's some people working on website and content management. There's some people who are doing project management, template delivery. There's a lot of pieces, blogs and blog writing and video editing, like there's a lot going on. So. I think that the features of GitLab probably impact different groups in different ways because it's it's a whole platform, not just you know code repository. It's more than that. So right. maybe I'll I'll say that and then leave it up to whoever feels compelled to. Fair enough. It. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to to segue off of that a little bit because what Brian said is what kind of I found to be one of the biggest benefits of it is it's it's this very kind of turnkey platform that's been helping uh, us organize and um, become like a, ce a central source of truth mm -hmm. for everybody working on the project. And we had, you know, we'd come from, from something that in my opinion, and maybe some of the folks who've been here for a while would back this up. Um, it was something that we were just, we were just pushing and pulling from is literally, we were mostly using it as code repositories where um, we found a lot of great stuff in GitLab that that lets us um, organize what we're trying to do, like on a release level, you know, mm -hmm. seeing what the temperature of all of the different tasks are that are scheduled for the coming release and giving us a really nice like project wide view where we can, you know, sort of dial into what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you... Oh, I'll add to that just one comment, which was that uh, Elisa and I were kind of in the background before being like, gosh, I wish we could just do this in GitLab, <laughs> like, because we both use it in our day jobs, you know, we use GitLab professionally too. So we were like, oh, there's these nice features. And if we had that, it'd be really nice. And so, you know, I think it was just one day we were like, you know, what? let's migrate, let's talk about migrating and let's create a, we have like a request for change process. And we were like, let's propose this and see what people think and kind of got that ball rolling and um, you know, it's it's moved forward since then and has been so far successful. So, um, yeah, so it was a it, it was kind of an interesting like the exposure to it, the knowledge of of like what it could do and what we knew we had with the other system that we were using. You know, it, it allowed us to to make some good proposals, and that's all public. You know, anybody can go read the RFC and see the discussion and who who said what about what. You know, yeah. um, and it's it's really good. It's great. And so. Just to dive a little bit more deeply into that, just so our, our you know audience can get a sense of what you do and how you do it. You know, when you talk about a documentation project like yours having a release, what are you releasing, right? And talk talk to talk to us a little bit about um, you know what the output of your product or your project is, and you know maybe kind of how that 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 output kind of um, touches different moments of the you know, the DevOps lifecycle that, that GitLab's optimized to, to help you with? Um, yeah, I'll take that one. Um, so the main project that we're working on in uh, the Good Docs project is the templates project right now. That's where we're creating um, templates for all of the major content types that are used in um, a variety of documentation projects. We're prioritizing um, templates that are used in most documentation projects. And we're also creating templates for niche cases or use cases or specialized markets as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so when we have a, a template release, it basically represents um, all of the kind of great template work that has been done by our community in that period of time. And then we just, we use GitLab to tag that release, bundle it all up, write the release notes and provide the release notes and then uh, ship it out to our community. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was reading your blog, uh, and I, forgive me because I forget which which one of you uh, authored the the piece, but um, it was talking about you know writer's block, um, and one way of overcoming writer's block is not beginning with a uh, with a blank page, right? And I think you know the the sort of crisis of documentation we often see in open source projects is you know, comes down in many ways to that, that sort of the, the fear of the blank page, right? And when you have, when you have to write documentation and there's nothing in front of you, 
uh, and you have to spin your wheels to kind of figure out um, what you want to say and how you want to say it and how you want to format it and how you want to organize it. That is time that most developers, I think, would want to spend on their project, right? Uh, developing their code. Not that the documentation is not part of the project. It certainly is. But you know what I mean? So having a template in front of you kind of streamlines the process and hopefully accelerates not 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 only adds you know good high quality structure and consistency to open source documentation but just helps kind of grease the creative wheels if you will to get people documenting their stuff in a more timely fashion and then a lot like building off of what you were just saying um a lot of uh, our templates are designed to be used by non-writers specifically mm -hmm. so people who feel a little bit of imposter syndrome or nervousness about uh creating documentation we're really trying to empower them and as you say get over the blank page uh so that so that they can create better documentation and put better documentation out in the world because there's just so much stuff in the world that needs to be documented mm -hmm. and not enough people to do the documenting. So if we can expand the circle of people who can create documentation, that's better for the world. Right, yeah, fantastic. Um, and so what, talk to me about some of the other things that, um, you know, um, other reasons you chose, you chose GitLab to do this work. You know, anything else, you know, especially appealing to you or, or help you achieve something you couldn't elsewhere? I was really hoping we'd be joined by um, Deanna, one of our community members. She's also a community manager with me. She couldn't make it tonight, but um, Deanna in particular has spearheaded uh, uh, a template uh, that we that we have built on GitLab. Mm. We're spinning up a new Hugo website, and we call it the Good Dogs website. Okay. <laughs> it's a uh, and it's for training people on how to use Git and GitLab specifically, because a lot of the people who join our community might not have that strong um, technical background or background in Git and GitLab. Um, and so we build this, this, uh, uh, this demo site so that people can practice using, with, uh, using Git, and specifically in a GitLab context, mm -hmm. and teach them those skills, because Git can be really intimidating for people who don't know it at first and uh, this way we can help onboard our community ensure that they can can make meaningful contributions and um, get them ready to uh, to uh, contribute great work to our site or our repos are those git trainings uh, also available uh, in your project uh, yes, they are. And we are going to take it in a new direction for our next release. We used to just have them be workshops. And one of the things we're going to do is make them more self-directed so that you can just work with uh, with our uh, repository and uh, get set up and teach yourself how to do Get with some guided mentorship along the way as being part of our community. Right, right. Great. Thanks, Elisa. Um, Brian mentioned that other folks use different aspects of GitLab. I don't want to I don't want to steamroll past uh, anybody else that wants to add something to that part of the conversation before I start asking more questions about your the future of the project. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I'd say so. One of the things that I um, will end up doing a lot is when I'm uh, going over, like I'm in the middle of a internal knowledge base project right now. We're actually trying to uh, take of the information that we have in like random people's brains, silos, notes here or there, mm -hmm. uh, and consolidating them together. Um, and uh, one of the things that I do in order to kind of do that in a relaxed environment is I take a really lightweight Chromebook out on my porch and work. So being able to have, you know, all the issues, you know, open in one window and launch, you know, and have just click on the, you know, the Git pod button on another window, it's really easy to just use that, and and just to get to enjoy nature while I'm working. So like, it's great to have an environment where I get to decide how I actually get to work instead of feeling like I have to be tethered to a machine that is, you know, configured in a really specific way. So I really, yeah. really like that. That's really cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I had not thought of that, about that, but um, that is, is, it's pretty neat. I, yeah, I agree. So, um, Talk to me about what's on the horizon for you all. You know, what's coming up for the Good Docs project? What important projects um, or noteworthy uh, initiatives do you have coming up? Um, let's 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 hear them. Well, I, I would like to hear from Valeria a little bit about the chronolog, what the chronolog is, and why we use it, um, and what that whole project is. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. So um, like Alisa mentioned, uh, our we built the, the chronologue, uh, I'm sorry, the Good Docs project builds templates. And so uh, the chronologue uh, team, what it does is that we take those templates and then try to build documentation using them. So we act as a kind of, um, we test the, the templates, the, the quality of the templates. And so based on our experience using the templates, then we give we feedback um, to, to the templates team and make suggestions of any changes that might uh, improve the templates for the, the folks that um, might find our, our project and want to use our templates. So you've got sort of community built-in quality assurance processes and user testing right in your in your community. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of like a, a peer review process of yeah. aiding and testing the templates. Is that an and, and building on what Valerian is doing there is not only are they testing the templates, but they're building an example as that, and that then becomes one of our deliverables. It, the the example that you pr provide. That, that developers can go and look at it at an exemplar version. And the chronologue is literally um, a, a time machine looking back in time um, in space. It's just sort of a fun project um, and a fun example of it with real APIs to a fake example. Right, right. That's pretty neat. I like that. Yeah, because I mean, what is the the sort of the unit test for documentation? You know, what is, how do you, how do you run a test on on documentation, right? I mean, Maybe you all have some good ideas for how you can sort of automate um, checking of, of, of documentation and quality, but uh, just having somebody sit down and try to use the thing um, and produce an example, a mock-up is a pretty great, uh, pretty great way to do it, in my opinion. Thanks for sharing that. I'm glad to, glad to hear about it. Another um, side project within it uh, that's ramping up now that we're, we're really starting to put some time into is a, like a doc tools registry that will help people find tooling and tool stacks that can help them build their own documentation systems. Okay. So it's not just the templates, but you know what pieces of the puzzle can you assemble and how would they work and are they compatible? Is there some way to make them compatible with the good docs templates? So like a way to ingest those or create those as archetypes or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the, the good docs registry, you know, um, it was a pain point that I had when I joined uh, the Good Docs, which was I have to create a documentation system. Where the heck do I start? Like, of course, I need to make documentation, but how do I make one? All we had were Word docs, and we need something better than that. So, what do I do? And and trying to find and scour the web and do all this. So, the the Good Docs registry or the Doc Tools registry, excuse me, is um is a place that somebody can come to kind of explore the landscape of technology and tooling that can help them deliver good documentation. Cool. So that's that's a big effort right now. Yeah, yeah. Anything else coming up that you all are working on that you wanna share? Yeah, since you mentioned what's on the horizon, uh, in 2022, we wrapped up a really big listening tour where we went to several technical writing conferences and polled many, many, many technical writers to talk about what important content types do you think we need to create document or uh, templates for? Mm -hmm. And uh, and we got tons of great feedback on that. And we've just finished kind of distilling it and turning it into our roadmap going forward. Um, so we are excited to offer um, for in on June 15th, we're going to have our first 1.0 template release that is based on a lot of that feedback where we'll offer two template packs, uh, a core documentation pack um, that will include the common documentation types that are used across most documentation projects, um, and also a community documentation pack, which is all about um, the core pieces of documentation you need to start an open source community, um, uh, since we really care about open source quite a bit. Um, and then moving forward, we we're going to take all the additional insights that they um, gave us last year, and we're building that, uh, building out future templates that we want to provide to the greater world after that. So that's some exciting things we have coming. That's really exciting. And that's coming up. You said June 15th. Is that right? Yep, that's our first 1.0 release. So awesome. 
congratulations on getting this far. That's fantastic. I'll look forward to reading all about it on your blog and checking it out on GitLab. If uh, anyone else is interested in your mission and wants to connect with you, wants to collaborate with you, not just use the materials in the release, but maybe get involved in the project and contribute something of the, their own, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, okay, I'll take that one too. Um, so we have uh, just implemented this year something called welcome wagon meetings, where we hold a couple of meetings regularly throughout the month, uh, where once people have filled out the form, you can come and get and uh, get a little bit of an orientation meeting about our project and the things that we're working on. And then we'll sit down and have a one on one conversation with you about what you're hoping to get out of contributing. What skills are you hoping to develop? What um, competencies do you want to gain while you're working here in our community? And we'll match you up to the right uh, working group that will give you those experiences and do a warm handoff to uh, the working group leader for that and get you started in the project. Wow, what a great onboarding, a new contributor onboarding experience. That's fantastic. Yeah, and the contributor onboarding is, is great. I think there's, there's, it's also worth mentioning that we're moving from being a very um, uh, community-oriented project and we're stepping to a point where our templates work by themselves and you literally don't even need to talk to us. Just download the templates <laughs> and um, it's giving us the ability to scale um, and hit where we're hoping within the next year or two, we're going to be, um, our templates are good enough that we, we can... Um, support many more people than needing to handhold everybody, um, which has sort of been, we're a very friendly community. We've got, I'm, I'm so proud of um, what a, a diverse community we've been able to build. Um, but yeah, we, we, we are now in a point where we are starting to reach out to users as well. Yeah. And, awesome. and I'd say that like, even though we're like, our goal is to make it so that people can just take our templates and run with it. If anybody is using them and has feedback for us, um, we could use that. If you incorporate that feedback into future releases, possibly um, like if it makes sense to as part of the template, or maybe there's confusion about it. And one of the things that we also want to do is to create some sort of usage guidelines or best practices, or like in your situation, you might want to use the template like this sort of supplemental material that. Uh, so yeah, if anybody in the community and the wider community, you know, gives it a try, let us know how it goes for you. Mm -hmm. And how can how can folks do that? Uh, let's see, uh, Elisa, I think you know. know that we one. just implemented a feedback form today, <laughs> so uh, uh, we'll give press. Brian the links to both the welcome wagon form and the feedback form if people want to uh, give us feedback. And also, we do take requests for if you have a template idea that you think you would like us to work on, we're happy to take requests. Fantastic. That's great. Well, again, thanks so much for, for joining. Uh, truly, it's been my pleasure to, to, uh, to chat with you and to, and to welcome the Good Docs Project to the GitLab Open Source Partners community. I'm really excited about um, all that we're going to learn from you and, and just thank you for um, all the work you're doing for the open source ecosystem. I know everybody really appreciates it.